Yeah, 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 I get it. It's weird that we're combining these two teams' news into one video, but today we're talking about two topics that I think have some bigger implications under their organizations than may appear at face value, because these two stories, honestly, even though they might be small individually, they mean a lot. So today we're talking about the Vancouver Canucks and we're talking about the Chicago Blackhawks. Let's go over the news that broke just a few minutes before I pressed this record button. It is Dylan Strome. He has come back on a two-year contract extension, no longer an RFA. It's a $3 million AAV for a guy whom the Chicago Blackhawks are totally, totally, totally gonna need to get more out of for the next season because, hey, if you're playing the year without Kirby Doc, you're playing the year without Alex Nylander, you're playing the year without Jonathan Taves, this is a team that is going to need the best out of Alex Dabrinkit, Patrick Kane, Dominic Kubalik, and now Dylan Strom. Sure, you have the guys you acquired, like, for example, Carl Soderberg is coming in here to replace that Brandon Saad forward spot in the lineup that got freed up when he got traded to Colorado, but... Dylan Strom is a guy who definitely does have a lot more to show at the NHL level, in my opinion, because he still only is like a year or two. Actually, no, it's uh, it's two years because, yeah, that was 2019. It's 2021 now. Oh my gosh, time is going by way too quickly. But he's two years removed from being a 51 point in 58 game player for the Chicago Blackhawks, which was a very big highlight for people who were fans of Dylan Strome, such as myself. This was a guy who was a third overall pick for a reason. He was touted to being a potential number one center down the line, but he wasn't able to get that proper development in the Arizona Coyotes organization. So now in the Chicago Blackhawks system, hey, last year he had a down year, 38 points. 58 games compared to where he was the season before. Also in the postseason, hey, three points, nine games, it's not terrible. But Dylan Strom is only 23 years old. Like, there still is room for this guy to grow. So signing him to a two-year contract extension worth $3 million could prove to be a steal as quickly as next season, depending on the role that this guy gets. Kane, Debrinket, Strom, Kubalik, these guys are going to have to carry while Doc and Taves are out. But we also had some other news here for the Vancouver Canucks, and we're not talking about Arvid Kosmar, there's a whole other video topic there, but we have a whole bunch of comments made by Michael Furland, as reported by Rick Dollywall on TSN. He talked with them earlier today, and, you know, I think for those who have been asking for him to go to the LTIR, I think your prayers might have been answered. There are good days and bad days. This week has been tough because I cannot be with my teammates. Being away from the team has been some of the toughest and hardest things in my life, Ferlin says from Manitoba. He's actually okay with going on the LTIR according to Dollywall. I'm fine with that. Getting healthy first is my goal. I'm not close to being at the NHL level and I have a ways to go. So there it is. There it is. It looks like Michael Furland is indeed probably going to go to the LTIR and the Canucks are probably going to sign Travis Hamanick to a, what is reported to probably being a one year, somewhat one million-ish dollar contract, but we'll get there when we get there. Furland has heard the calls to retire and he says this, I hear a lot of it from my wife and my family. I understand. I just want to get healthy first. So yeah, it's not even just the Canucks fans on Twitter and on YouTube comments clamoring for this guy to retire. It's apparently his wife, it's his family as well, which definitely would have a part in a decision like that, I would think. He also says that his teammates are chirping him on Snapchat. That should say Snapchat. Rick Dollywell comes over here with the typo, but yeah, they keep in touch and they're great guys. And Dollywall kind of sums everything up here by saying that Furlan is a player who cares so much and is going through a very tough time. There's nothing more than he would like to please the hockey fans in Vancouver. There is a human element to this story. It's not the time to talk about his contract. And yeah, that's a very good point. We've been saying it this entire time, man. We wish that Furlan has a healthy, speedy recovery, but the way he is going right now, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to play hockey with that established. So talk to me in the comments what you think about Strom signing an extension and Michael Furland on the LTIR. Possibly hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>